Assalamu alaikum. I am Dr. Tamjeen Saleem. Welcome you to the lecture for 10th week. And the topic for today's lecture is stress, coping and management. In today's lecture, we will be discussing regarding that uh, what is the physiology of stress, how it can be uh, measured, what are the different theories or models that can help us understand stress, how it can be measured, what are some of the effective and ineffective strategies that people often use to cope with stress? And uh, what are the behavioral techniques, uh, behavioral management techniques that can also be used that can help people to deal with stress more effectively? Stress is not a new terminology. We can simply say that stress is something that we often hear about. We often hear this terminology in our daily routine. Often we use it, often we hear other people stating that. And whenever um, we talk about stress, we can say that everyone expresses stress from time to time. Anything from uh, everyday responsibilities like work and family uh, to serious life even such as new health diagnosis or rather illness diagnosis war or death of a loved one can actually uh, trigger, trigger stress stress is the body's reaction to any change that occurs uh, and uh, that may require an adjustment or response the body reacts to these changes with uh, physical mental as well as emotional responses it is a normal part of life or we can say that it is a um, reality of life that causes uh, stress for us and the cause of stress are widespread and uh, as discussed previously there may be some kind of uh, minor hassles uh, in daily routine or there may be major life changing events so we can define stress as a negative emotional experience that is accompanied by predictable biochemical, physiological, cognitive, behavioral changes that are directed either towards altering the stressful event or accommodation to its effect. And we will be discussing that how do we try to manage the change by uh, changing the stressful event or trying to make some kind of accommodation to the effect that is how we actually cope with it. Any object or event present in uh, the internal or external world of the individual, which means anything physical or psychological, that is capable to evoke uh, a negative or positive uh, situation that is called stress is considered as a stressor or we may label it to be a trigger as the objective of the today's lecture is to understand uh, stress and physiology of stress so it is important to understand briefly regarding the nervous system and physiology of stress there are billions of neurons that make up the nervous system which is organized in a hierarchy with major divisions and subdivisions Majorly, there are two divisions of it, which are called nervous, uh, central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system consists of brain and spinal cord, and uh, the peripheral nervous system, uh, it has a number of neurons which extend from spinal cord to all other parts of the body. The effects of the stress on body result from our nervous system response to our environment, and the neurons which we are referring to uh, work always electrochemically. They have a substance that is released by them in their synaptic cleft, which is called neurotransmitters. And many times the presence of these neurotransmitters, uh, the amount of neurotransmitters released, whether they are overly released or they are underly released, it has an influence on the bodily mechanisms and these changes in the nervous system on these production of the neurotransmitter may bring different form of stress. 
Here in the slide, we have a flow chart that is explaining the divisions of uh, central nervous system as well as uh, associations of peripheral nervous system. The peripheral nervous system uh, is majorly uh, responsible for dealing with stress. Peripheral nervous system is part of nervous system which is mainly lying outside the brain and spinal cord is divided into two parts that is somatic nervous system and autonomic nervous system. The somatic nervous system uh, generally attends the skin and voluntary uh, muscle activities. However, the autonomic nervous system attends uh, the internal organs and is therefore important in um, understanding the responses that the body may take in order to adjust with stress. The autonomic nervous system has uh, various responses uh, through the two divisions, which is known, uh, which are known as uh, sympathetic nervous system and parasympathetic nervous system. And these two uh, subdivisions of uh, autonomic nervous system, they uh, differ automatically and uh, anatomic, uh, anatomically as well as functionally. The sympathetic division of autonomic nervous system generally uh, mobilizes the resources of the body in emergency and stressful situations as well as in strong emotional responses. Like um, what it does is that it increases the rate and strength of uh, heart contractions. It also increases the breathing rate, constriction of uh, blood vessels, decrease in gastrointestinal activity, stimulation of the sweat glands and dilation of the pupil of the eye. Many of uh, these physiological changes that um, I've just addressed they generally um, are a response to the flow of blood and oxygen to the skeletal muscles, enabling the organism to uh, generate a motor response, specifically in threatening situations. On contrary, the parasympathetic nervous system uh, promotes relaxation, digestion, growth functions, It is uh, generally active uh, under the normal and uh, non-stressful conditions in which a person may be feeling relaxed. The both uh, divisions, that is uh, parasympathetic nervous system and sympathetic nervous system, they actually uh, target the same organs, but their functions are different. Neurons in the autonomic nervous system are activated by the neurotransmitters, principally acetylcholine and norepinephrine. And throughout the discussion regarding the physiology of stress, we will be referring to these neurotransmitters. Here there is a picture, a figure that is explaining the autonomic nervous system as well as the organs that we were referring to. Uh, and here you can see that the solid lines and the bold type represent the parasympathetic nervous system and its activities, whereas the dotted or the dashed lines and which are the lines which are lighter, these are actually indicating uh, the association of uh, and the working of the sympathetic nervous system. The ductless glands of the body, which are known as uh, endocrine system, are present throughout the body and uh, neuroendocrine system is basically based on those endocrine glands that are controlled and interact with the nervous system. The glands of endocrine and neuroendocrine system secrete chemicals which are known as hormones and these hormones have a very um, major role in uh, stress situations as well as in stress response. So these hormones are basically produced by the neuroendocrine systems in the bloodstream to be carried to the different parts of the body and that is how the body then responds to the 
Pituitary gland is connected to the hypothalamus, which is a structure in forebrain. Uh, it is often referred to as master gland because it produces a number of hormones that affect other glands. And what happens afterwards is that uh, when those glands are affected, so they prompt the production of yet other hormones. It is located in the brain uh, of the seven hormones produced by interior portion of the pituitary gland, adrenocortical Topic hormone that is also known as ACTH plays an essential role in stress hormone and when we will be discussing regarding the complete physiology we will be often referring to this particular hormone. When this is stimulated by uh, hypothalamus, pituitary gland releases adrenocorticopic uh, hormone which in turn act on the adrenal glands. Another important gland is adrenal gland, which is located on the top of each kidney. Each gland is composed of an outer covering called adrenal cortex and an inner part that is adrenal medulla and both have their own responses uh, in a stressful situation. The adrenocortical response occurs when uh, adrenocorticotropin hormone from pituitary stimulates the adrenal cortex to release glucocorticoid, which is one of another hormone. Cortisol uh, is also another of uh, important hormone of adrenal gland, which has a um, wide range of uh, influence onto the major kidneys, uh, major organs in the body. This hormone is closely related with the stress that the level of cortisol circulating the blood can be used in an index of the stress, which means that generally we can make utilization of measurement of cortisol in order to see that what level of stress is present in the body. And we can test or measure cortisol through different mediums, that is, we can make blood testing or we can also test uh, saliva and through uh, these different uh, mediums we can assess that what level of cortisol is present cortisol peak level appears 20 to 40 minutes after the stressor which means that allows time for the measurement of stress hormone cortisol can also be assessed um, via urine this uh, response usually occurs when the sympathetic nervous system activates adrenal medulla. This action prompts the secretion of catecholamines, a class of chemicals containing norepinephrine. Norepinephrine is both a hormone as well as a neurotransmitter is, and is produced in many places in the body besides the adrenal medulla. So we'll be having focus on uh, these uh, neurotransmitters in a while. The other hormone, epinephrine, which is often known as adrenaline, is produced excessively and exclusively in adrenal medulla. However, we refer to norepinephrine that it is not only um, produced by the adrenal medulla. It is also, uh, epinephrine is also closely and uniquely associated with the adrenal medullary stress response that is sometimes used an index of stress. The amount of epinephrine secreted can be determined by a saying, a person urine, that measuring stress by tapping into the physiology of the stress response. Like the other response, epinephrine and norepinephrine circulates through the bloodstream and uh, their action is both slow as well as prolonged in comparison to the action of the other neurotransmitters. Physiology of stress response Whenever the stress is perceived by an individual in his surroundings, there is activation of somatic nervous system. Somatic nervous system is responsible for motor activity. Uh, rather, we can say there is intense motor activity produced by somatic nervous system uh, and it makes the body ready for attack, defense or escape. So when somatic nervous system is activated, it mobilizes 
the body to react in emotional and stressful situation which means that there may be fight or flight that is the body is prepared for either action that is to fight or to flight so we have two options in which the first option that is selected by the body or the individual is fight so for fight or for flight what happens is that there are two routes of uh, through which the body is prepared for fight or flight the first is the activation of somatic nervous system which in turn activates the adrenal medulla so this is the path one that when it is activated it acti uh, the path one that is um, started from the adrenal medulla it activates epinephrine or norepinephrine and which brings about changes in the functioning of a uh, cardiovascular system respiration and digestion the path two that occurs after uh, there is activation of somatic nervous system starts from hpa axis which is known as hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis it prompts action in hypothalamus which in turn involves all the structures and activates the corticotropin uh, hormone which further stimulates the interior pituitary uh, gland which is actually present at the base of the brain which activates the hormone that i was referring in the previous slide as adrenocorticotropin hormone which stimulates the adrenal cortex which further uh, stimulates the glucocorticoid including uh, the cortisol which mobilizes energy resources and raises the level of blood sugar through which um, energy is provided to the cell so here we are discussing regarding the excitatory mechanism that counters all and when the excitatory uh, mechanism takes place it has to be countered by the body obviously so to so maintain uh, to maintain the homeostasis or to maintain the balance of the body so there is an counter act that is performed which is inhibitory or a compensatory mechanism so what happens is that when uh, the energy of the cell is provided by through all this uh, path to that is hpa axis it allows for adaptation to threatening situation appropriate level of activation takes place and uh, it brings about a state which is known as allostasis allostasis uh further what it does is that it helps in uh, or it is basically that autonomic nervous system helps in order to adjust to normal state however if this uh, body or the individual stays in uh, allostasis uh, state for a longer duration it becomes an uh, another state which is known as allostasis load allostasis load helps uh to overcome the ability to adapt and this becomes actually the source of problems 